Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we are going to be installing Linux into our Buffalo Link Station 220DE. So let's get started. Now, I want to thank Micro Center for sponsoring this video. And if you do need computer parts or any maker parts, you could actually go to their store or visit their online retail store. Now, a little bit of backstory on this guy. I bought this back in 2018 on a Black Friday deal for $69, which is a great deal for this type of hardware. You get a dual bay, gigabit ethernet, a fan to cool everything off, and it doesn't look bad. The only downside to this guy is the software. I really had a ridiculous problem with how much it's lacking on the software, and especially they were still supporting SMB version one when I bought this guy. Now, they just recently came out with an update December 3rd, 2019, which is about a month ago. And they finally updated all the security issues and all that stuff on this guy. But seriously, it took that long just to fix that. Well, besides that point, I was thinking, why not install something that's a little bit more capable like Linux? With Linux, we're going to be able to run VPNs, torrent clients, downloading clients, everything you want right off this guy. On a side note, uh, there are a couple of things I do want to update you guys on. I am starting a brand new series on my gaming channel, which is based on the games I wanted to play, which is Space Engineers. And we're doing more of a comedic approach to it, uh, more like the office or modern family style. So uh, check it out. I'll leave a link down in the description below. And also, if you haven't seen me install Linux on this laptop, this is now my favorite laptop, my go to basically. It, the biggest feature about this that I like is that it's fanless. I could actually use this as a physical laptop on the couch without having to worry about my sperm count. Yeah, it, it stays cool throughout. So the GitHub we're actually going to is this one right here with a lot of numbers and zeros, which is a binary code. And I'll leave a link in the description down below, but it's called Debian on Buffalo. I actually ran through this real quick once before and I accidentally de deleted all the footage. So that's actually my bad. And I'm basically like recording this twice. Now, uh, head down to the wiki, and you can actually see this is pretty recent because the last time it's been updated is like eight days ago, or actually yesterday. But yeah, head over to the wiki, and it'll actually give you all the steps that you need. Like I said, I ran through this already once before, and it was pretty simple. Um, the first thing we do need to do is to prep our device so it would actually accept downloading some files and changing the bootloader. There is a way to kind of revert this back to stock firmware if you ever decide to sell it or want that again. Now, I did download all the tools. So I have the ACP commander and also the actual full Git. So I have all the firmware and everything that I need. And the first thing we need to do is java-jar ACP commander dash T for target 192.168.105.107 is my IP address dash PW for the password, the admin password that you set up minus password dash O. So clear out the root password when you're trying to go into um, a telnet. Now that I have everything working, I just need telnet 192.168.105.107 login would be root and there's no password and there we have it now we have the actual prompt to this device we're going to navigate over to the boot folder and you can see that there's actually a initrd.buffalo and uh uimage.buffalo we're going to back those up and load in our own but first i do need to open up another shell and if you've seen my previous videos before uh, i used this little python trick to turn my computer into a web server and that's what I'm going to be doing. Debian.buffalo. Uh, I'm going to be loading up with Buster, installer images. And if you see me like type so fast, it's not that I'm typing fast. Uh, hitting tab will auto complete your typing. Um, ARMHF, hit tab, and then you see it auto completes. And this is where I need to be a web server. So I'm going to type in Python M simple HTTP server. And there you go, it starts the server at port 8000. And on this side, this is what I need to grab. Now first, to back everything up, I need to move inird.buffalo, uh, the initial RAM disk, to inird.buffalo back. I'm also gonna move the uimage, buffalo to uimage.back. And now I could wget http 192.168.105 and the IP of this device, I believe it's 122. 122 port 8000 slash initrd.buffalo. 
there you go it's going to grab that file and replace well it didn't replace it because i moved it and then now i need to grab the image file so i'm going to hit the up arrow and retype this u image dot buffalo and type in the model number that you have which would be ls220d and that's the model number i have now i have to rename that so mv u image buffalo ls so you see it auto completes then u image buffalo and that is it we are done now i do recommend using the word the type sync just to make sure that all the drives are copied over and it moved and i could exit so now what i could do is use op commander and do a command re is it reboot and it's going to reboot this unit right here and automatically you're going to have you're going to be allowed to ssh into this installer yep there you go i just heard the hard drive spin down and now i don't need the python anymore i could just exit this prompt and we're moving on to the next step now that was the easy part just moving files over having to start the new u image and everything the hard part actually comes where you have to decide how to partition the drives so now i'm waiting for it to start up and i'm going to do 192 ping it and i'm just going to wait until it gives me back a reply it does take a while to boot up now i currently only have one drive in here i did have two drives a second ago but if you follow me on twitter one of the drives went bad as i was doing this oh i realized it went bad and then yeah now it's only on one drive all right now that we got connected to the system you can see my pings are working i'm going to issue the command ssh installer at 192.168.105.107 that 107 there we go again yes and the password is install now it's going to boot up with this blue prompt and this is where you can start your installer process i'm going to start installer united states debian.org i don't have any proxies it's going to download the release files and you just basically follow the prompt english united states uh root password it's gonna ask you to make a user so i'm just gonna make my username okay all right here we go now if you are keeping the default layout you actually can because it already spaced it out the way it's supposed to where the first partition has to be exe3 and it has to be the boot drive second one could be your full uh your primary root and then the swap and then you know whatever your storage is going to be so what i'm and what i'm going to end up doing is adding the attributes to all this stuff so here i'm going to do i'm going to use this main drive ext3 and this one format partition mount point is gonna be boot because the first partition has to be boot format our partition done now the next one which is the 5.1 gigabyte right here I'm going to use this as well. Also keep it as an ext3. And turn this into our root. That's done. Swap is already pre-configured, so I don't have to touch anything on that. Okay, and for this one, i got to find my 3 terabyte drive. Go into there. Change it to ext4. then mount it and i gotta manually enter this mnt array and that's it done setting up for this partition we basically have the layout of what it needs 
So I'm gonna finish partitioning and write changes to disk. It's gonna install everything onto the root partition and all the files that we were just looking at will be installed into the boot. So let me double check this. Uh, yes, seems about right. And that's it, it's gonna do its thing. Give it a couple of minutes and the next time you see this, we should be able to boot into Debian. All right, now that it's done and it rebooted itself, uh, this is where I have to see what happens next because it doesn't really give you much instructions on what follows after this. Other than post installation, it seems like I'm supposed to be able to SSH into this guy and install the rest of the stuff that I need. Like, I don't know, I gotta really check. So let's clear the screen. Let's exit that because that killed my prompt a little. Make that bigger, let's SSH. Actually, ping. Okay, it's coming back. And map. Let's see what ports are open. SSH is open. That's a good, good sign. Let's do root. Maybe root login is not allowed. Okay, my login works. And there we have it. All right, this is sweet. I got Debian in the Linux Buffalo, DF-H, 2.6 terabytes on mount array. It booted because all the boot installation is there. I have my drive. This is a success. This is definitely a success. Now, the first thing I recommend installing actually to avoid all this, let me see if, let's do SU. There you go, I can get into root app install sudo because we need to be able to sudo into stuff when, I, when we're in our own user okay app install web there is no web in here so i'm gonna have to download the the deb which is fine There you go, now I have sudo access and sudo installed, which is what I really needed. Since I do really need to download webmin, I know this supports all um, OS's. So webmin will give me a GUI GUI access to configure the whole system without me having to log into SSH every time. So, after I downloaded that from Webmin, sudo dpkg -r. I think this would be the best choice for me to uh, configure the system without having to, like I said, log in every time through SSH just to install a package. Now I'm doing sudo apt-get install -f because it'll install the, all the packages that it needs, like libnet and all the other stuff, like unzip. Now while this is happening, let me explain to you guys. Like I said earlier, you could actually roll back into the original firmware by putting this into emergency mode and downloading the software from uh, Buffalo and they could reload the entire partition back into the system so it's back to stock. This is the first time I'm installing Debian in this so I don't know how it's gonna be. Uh, I am gonna show you right now the speeds I'm getting just with this system in particular compared to my makeshift NAS that I made with a Nano Pi and a four terabyte hard drive. And as you can see, the four terabyte hard drive, I'm getting full gigabit bandwidth through transfer. There's something going on with the factory firmware and I'm hoping this would either correct it or make it faster in some way or not. So that's why I also decided to go Debian with this route because of that issue. I can't really use it with that type of speed. It's, it's too slow. If we're gonna have a gigabit LAN, let's saturate the whole thing. Now I'm not really gonna bore you with the details of Webmin. It's a really quick GUI interface that allows you to configure everything on your drive. If you do wanna see what that is all about, I do have a video that I made a couple of years ago on Webmin, which is basically the same, but just a newer layout on this new version. Now with all that set up, we can now test the speeds. And as you can see, it's actually a little bit faster than what we were getting originally, but still nowhere near the gigabit LAN that we should be having. So maybe it is the device itself not able to push the one gigabit with the CPU it's at, that's on board. 
But either way, uh, it did see a slight improvement. And now that I could use this with Debian and add a couple of more modules like VPN and stuff like that, it might prove a little bit more useful than what it was before, but still uh, not as fast as I want it to be. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And also remember to share this video. It will help the channel a lot. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.